Hello everyone, thank you very much for joining me. I've got some things that I'm very excited to share with you guys. So I did a video last night and it just, it didn't feel complete. And I was wondering why and uh, it turns out I only got part of the download. So it took me a little while to regain my focus so that the rest of this could come in. So just let it be a lesson to myself and to you. If you don't get every answer you're looking for right away, uh, make sure you hang out in that flow state and it'll eventually make its way to you. Um, instant gratification is something that is a bit of a no-no in the spiritual community. We are not always in the right energy to receive the answers that we need. So it takes a lot of patience and dedication and trust that everything that's meant for us is going to work their way to us eventually. So if you're out there asking questions to spirit, looking for answers, looking for solutions, keep your eyes open, look for that synchronicity and know that you are worthy and deserving of everything that's making its way to you. So for this message, it was kind of interesting. Um, we talk a lot about light workers being empaths and old souls being very sensitive in that way. But it turns out that being an empath is only an entry level ability. And that empathic ability is meant to blossom and sprout into something much more profound. And we are looking to transfer that empathic ability into the ability of telepathy. And how is this done? <clears throat> well, it seems very complicated, but it's actually not. Is as long as you are in a constant state of evaluation and a constant effort to maintain an overview of your reality, your consciousness is going to automatically shift from one that is fully engaged and in, immersed in being this vessel, walking, talking, I am this body, to one that is okay, <clears throat> this body is a vessel and I am the driver of the body. So how does empathy affect you differently in either state? So when you are fully engaged and immersed in the body, your empathy looks like this. When someone else enters your field energetically, or if you go to them with your consciousness energetically, you can read their emotion and it comes to you, it presents itself in the form of that emotion within you. So when you are not really aware that you're an empath, you can be around a group of people or an individual and you're picking up on their anxiety or you're picking up on their anger and you're claiming it as your own because you don't really realize that this is something that is being broadcast to you that you're picking up. But once you wake up and you start your training, you realize that you're, you're able to distinguish between your own emotions and the emotions of other people that are being picked up by you, um, which is very difficult to do. And if you're to that level of your awakening um, and your training, congratulations, because that's extremely difficult to do. And people go lifetimes being miserable because they don't really understand the tool set that they actually have. They don't know how to sharpen it. They don't know how to discern what's theirs and what's not. So they just feel like they're getting pulled all over the place. And this can be <clears throat> extremely difficult in the workplace. I know that I struggled with this for a long time because emotions in the workplace are usually high. And at the end of the day, you're not only dealing with the own, your own stress and pressure that you're under to perform and exist in that environment, but you're also absorbing all the energy of the people that, you know, don't really want to be there and are um, sort of under the surface, even though they may appear happy, nobody wants to be there. There's always that underlying itch of, you know, this sucks, basically. And we pick up on that, we carry it with us. We don't really know how to shield and guard ourselves from that necessarily. So a lot of people just suffer with that. And that's good if you eventually turn that suffering into understanding and 
use it as a platform to propel yourself forward into better things. But um, in the workplace is somewhere that we're bar bombarded with this stuff. And I've dealt with that for a long time myself. And my guides told me eventually when I got to the point where I could um, read that download from them that it's a great training ground. It's a great proving ground. It's a way to build relationships and observe the creator in a certain state and practice discerning what is yours and what is not. So eventually I got to the point where I wasn't taking on that anxiety and um, claiming it as my own. I could eventually inter interact with my coworkers and say, hey, this person's angry, this person's frustrated, this person's worrying about finances, this person's, you know, worried about their boyfriend and, you know, all these different things that go into this. Um, it's a pretty big deal and it's a lot to take in. But we are meant to transform that ability into one where we don't have to generate that emotion. That emotion doesn't have to be conjured up inside of us in order to read or understand what someone else is projecting. We are meant to be from the perspective of the driver of this vessel and being in that state, the state where you are, this is a vehicle that I am operating. This is a, ve a vehicle that is designed to measure and read our environment. Um, when you get to that state, you read and pick up that energy as thought. So it's not always that uncomfortable impulse that's going to take some time to discern. And even in that discernment can use up a lot of your energy reserves. It is just meant to simply enter your field as a telepathic thought. So let's say you are immersed in this vessel. You are this vessel. You are in the illusion, but still learning, still waking up, still developing your tools and things are coming to you. You're reading your environment. Um, the emotions of others are bubbling up inside of you. You're feeling them. Even if you're easily able to discern that they aren't yours and they belong to them, you are still dealing with that emotion influencing your vessel. But let's say you take on the perspective of being the driver of this vessel, simply the operator, the one who can observe and decide what direction to go. That impulse that you're picking up from other people is just going to appear and enter your mind as a psychic notification of what someone else is going through. And this is a super valuable skill that is going to be coming online for a lot of us out there because it is no longer necessary for us to study and examine the human condition at that level. We can simply observe and, pro and provide solutions to those who need it. We can observe and work with people and identify areas that they need to heal in, or we can observe and pick up the notification that maybe we should stay out of a certain environment, or maybe we shouldn't enter somebody's field, or, you know, it helps us be more responsible and in tune with our own energy because we have created that light shield around us with the knowledge that we've obtained over our training as old souls. So I guess the the theme of this message, the if you take anything away from this, do what you can to cultivate and maintain the awareness that you are simply the operator of this vessel that was built to measure and experience this reality on all levels. And it doesn't really do you any good. It doesn't serve your mission to be taking on these energies of other people. It does serve your mission to identify where people need help or where others need work and be able to provide a solution energetically, not necessarily by interfering directly, 
but more so sending the quantum love and light that we know how to do. We use our multidimensional consciousness to create scenarios of solution to those people who are in need of some clarity in their life. Um, and this is how healers do their work. This is how anybody who's multidimensional in nature and has brought that part of themselves forward operate. That is the 5D quantum way. That is the solution that us old souls can bring to the table that seems silly to most of the people that are participating in this collective with us. So keep that in mind. <clears throat> it's important to know that there are some big shifts going on and there are some things that you can do to help that transition take place. Um, it doesn't always have to be a kicking and screaming situation, which a lot of this spiritual development can be because the old version of ourself is trying to cling on to us and doesn't really understand what's happening. And um, heard something the other day. The mind is always searching for answers because it doesn't trust what the soul is doing. So I think that was feel good. But we're always looking for what we can do to reach the next level. We're always looking for some mountain we can climb in order to get to where we want to go. But I want you to know that right here and right now, who you are in this now moment is enough. You are enough. And what is the saying? Come as you are, as you are right now is as good as you will ever need to be. There is nothing you can do to diminish who you are in the eyes of the creator. There is nothing, there's no action you can take that is going to make your higher self and your guides think differently of you. So if they aren't holding you to the actions and mistakes of your past, it's not required for you to do that either. And you can move forward right now as you are into this multidimensional state. This 5D version of yourself is right there ready for you to take on. That mantle is ready for you to take because it belongs to you. And there's nothing that anybody can ever say to change that. So hopefully that helps you going forward. And um, I come from the heart when I say this information. So I love you guys very much. Thank you very much.